all right so in this video we'll take a look at how to update the express lrs firmware on the r9 mx receiver using the beta flight pass through method and this method will also apply to other r9 receivers so if you get the bootloader error and you're not able to update or make changes to the express lrs firmware especially with the beta flight pass through method then this video should definitely help you so stick around and watch till the end so the first thing that we have to make sure is that we are using the correct bootloader file from express lrs website so for every r9 receiver whether it's r9 mx or r9 mm receiver we have two bootloader files one with the button bootloader and one without the button bootloader which is labeled as no button bootloader so like in my previous video where i talked about flashing express lrs on the r9 mx receiver in depth you must have seen that i used the no button bootloader file and that's very important so that we don't get other errors while making changes in the future so first make sure to use the no button bootloader file next we have to decide how to power up the receiver so with some flight controllers we can plug in the usb cable and that way we can power up the receiver whereas with some flight controllers we have to plug in the lipo battery in my case i'll have to use the lipo battery to power up the receiver and that's what i'll be using and in case your receiver is powered up from the flight controller using the usb cable then just connect the usb cable to the computer and wait for the express lrs configurator to initialize the bootloader and it will automatically enter the bootloader so now i launch express lrs configurator software and here i'll select the latest version that's available and in the device category i'll select fr sky r9 and the device category i'll set that to r9 mx receiver if you have any other receiver then you can select that i'll select r9 mx and in the flashing method i'll set this to beta flight pass through method and here you can select all the options that you want so select the frequency that you want to use depending on which region you are from and if you want you can enable or disable other options like telemetry and hybrid switches and make sure that your binding phrase is exactly the same as you have used with the transmitter module so keep that in mind and before we begin with the flashing process let's just take a look at the beta flight settings as well so i'll plug in the usb cable to my flight controller and i'll launch beta flight so first in the ports tab i've enabled serial rx on whichever uart i've connected my receiver to so i've connected my r9 mx receiver on uart1 so i'm using the tx and the rx pad then in the configuration tab under the receiver settings i've selected serial based receiver and and i've selected crossfire as the protocol and that's pretty much what we have to do in beta flight so i'll disconnect and quit beta flight and now i'll go to the express lrs configurator and now i can click on build and flash so now the firmware has been built so as soon as the configurator is about to initiate the bootloader i will connect the lipo battery to the flight controller in order to power up the receiver so okay so we have first attempt second attempt so now i'll plug in the battery and we have success and the receiver has been updated successfully so it's actually that simple and quick the only thing that's important is to use the correct bootloader file for the receiver 
because even if you have the regular bootloader file and if you try to initiate the bootloader with the bind button when powering up the receiver sometimes the receiver will not enter the bootloader setup and that way the flashing process will not be successful so from my experience i've found out that using the no button bootloader file is the best option and in case if you're wondering how to flash the no button bootloader file on the r9mx receiver then check out my previous video where i've explained thoroughly on how to flash express lrs on this receiver using the stlink method because since i'm using express lrs with this flysky i6x radio transmitter i cannot update or make changes to the firmware from the radio transmitter so for the very first time i had to use the stlink device and after that i can use the beta flight pass through method for the receiver for the r9 transmitter i still have to use the stlink but that's not a problem for me at least so i hope you found this video helpful and if you have any other questions you can comment them and if you found this video helpful you can give it a like and subscribe to my channel as well so thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for more videos